Hello everybody, welcome back to the show and welcome to 2017. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope that your holidays were fun and safe. And if you get a moment in the comment section down below, please leave me a message about how your holidays were. Did you go anywhere? Did you travel? Did you have a party? Did you throw a party? Did you go to a party? Maybe you got some gifts. What kind of gifts did you get? What was your favorite gift you may have received? Tell me a little bit, a story about your holidays in the comment section. I really want to know what you did and how it went. But as I said, it is 2017. And I know that some of you are thinking, we are surrounded by an abundance of air and water. We are surrounded by an abundance of air and water. And surely there must be some way in this new year with all of the technological advancements that we have to make power from that water and air. And there is, they're called kinetic generators, kinetic wind generators and kinetic water generators, or what we might more commonly call such a, a wind turbine or a water turbine. And you can use those that will generate power from air or water respectively. And yeah, that's how you would generate the power. Uh, it's not very interesting. So, you know, I'm not going to make uh, any of the kinetic generators. They're just, uh, you know, they're not really that much fun. They're not really all that interesting. They don't really produce that much power. So uh, quite frankly, they're pretty boring. So I don't really see any point in doing it. But figured I'd answer your question for you. Like I said, you're probably wondering how we generate power from water and air. And that's how you do it. So, yeah. So that's going to be all for this episode. And um, what do you mean it's not enough? I got to do more? All right. Well, if you guys could keep a secret, I'll show you how to make power from water and air. All right. This is how you create power from water and air. Now, you'll have to excuse the construction. I just got finished building all of this, and there is a lot to it. But I'm going to try and explain it the best that I can. Now, the first thing that we need is air. You would think that Greg Tech would have some way of actually getting air that would be simple. They have pumps that will drain an entire ocean or a lava lake in a matter of seconds, but no way to just extract air from the air. So instead, what we have to use is a basic compressor. And if we put an empty cell in a basic compressor, it turns it into this, a compressed air cell. And then if we take the compressed air cell and put it into a fluid canner, it will turn it into, well, air. There you say, we have air. And we take the air out, and it gets piped into two directions. It's going over here, which we're going to come to that later. And it also comes over to here. So here we store up on air. And when we put air through a centrifuge, it separates air into nitrogen and oxygen. Now the oxygen goes over to here. This area over here is a storage area for oxygen, which I'm apparently running low on. I'll have to look at that. And so we're going to come back to the rest of this in just a minute. Over here is where we deal with the water. And I've shown this before, but if you electrolyze the water, you get hydrogen and oxygen. And again, the oxygen goes over here to this setup. And the hydrogen goes in here to a fluid canner where it gets put into cells and sent over there. Okay, let's come back to this. So again, as I said, we separate the nitrogen and the oxygen. So now we have nitrogen. And then over here, we have a chemical reactor. And what the chemical reactor allows us to do is to take nitrogen and oxygen and recombine them. But instead of recombining them in a way that makes air, we recombine them in a way that makes nitrogen dioxide. So now make sure you understand this. We took the air, we separated the nitrogen and the oxygen, and then we put the nitrogen and oxygen back together. Uh, it's crazy, I know, but it does work. And once we have this nitrogen dioxide, we send it over here, where you see we have nitrogen dioxide, and we're just putting it into cells. We're putting it into cells so that we can send it over here to this machine, which is a, uh, a regulator, okay? And we have hydrogen. That's what's coming from our processing the water over there. Remember the water? So it sends us the hydrogen and it sends us the nitrogen dioxide. So that's where these things are all coming to this regulator and if you haven't seen the regulator in Greg Tech it's really a pretty neat uh, tool you basically say what item you want and what slot you want it to go into in the targeted 
um, block, which in this case you can see this little arrow, kind of looks like an arrow pointing into this chemical reactor. And so basically I'm saying take one nitrogen dioxide cell, put it in a slot four, take three hydrogen cells, put it in a slot five. And then this side here just stores how, whatever I might have at the time. But if I send that over here, you can see I have nitrogen dioxide, hydrogen, and we're also getting some air. Remember I said this air split off, it goes over to here. So we have nitrogen dioxide, which remember we made from air. And we have hydrogen, which remember we got from water. And then we combine it with a little bit more air and we end up with something called rocket fuel. That's right, rocket fuel. And what do you do with rocket fuel? You send it over to a gas turbine and you burn rocket fuel for power. Interestingly enough, uh, this process here, when it's done, actually produces rocket fuel and water. So that water gets sent back over to the electrolyzer to get turned back into hydrogen and oxygen. So in a sense, we're just using the air. Since we started with water and we started with air, we end up with rocket fuel and water. Yeah, it seems crazy, but it does actually work. Uh, it does require a lot of tubes and pipes in order to uh, get everything to where it needs to go. It requires a lot of conveyor belts and some other things. But this advanced gas turbine, it burns the rocket fuel and it generates power. And that power gets put into this medium voltage battery buffer here, which you can see I have four batteries. They're all full. And this thing powers all of the machinery. It powers all of this machinery. And I should mention that all of this machinery is basic machinery, which is all low voltage, except for this one chemical reactor. That one is a medium voltage, but the rest of it is all low voltage, medium voltage chemical reactor. And it, this system provides enough power to power all of this machinery. And in addition, I have it set up here so when there is excess power, it shunts it down into this. I'm using here a high voltage battery buffer and you can see this going up because it actually produces an excess amount of power. It produces more power than it uses to make the power. How wonderful is that? A complicated system perhaps? And yes, the tubing and the piping, it's probably not very efficient. I'm not good at doing things efficiently. I will state that many, many times over and over. But get that, a system that runs on its own power, it's making the power from nothing but water and air, and it actually produces an excess amount of power. Pretty darn cool. Now, if you're like me, the next thing you might wonder is, given that we can do this, why can't we do this outside of Minecraft? Why can't we do this in our world? Guess what? We can. I have actually built all of this machinery in my garage and it produces power for free. No longer paying some company or some government to provide me with power. I have free power and you can have free power too that is why i wanted to share this with you you could all have free power Take it away, you boys. Don't have to, hey what are you doing get out of my house hey who are you you're not allowed in here get out of here nothing you just heard is true the only way to produce power with water and air is by using kinetic generators that's the only way trust your government